looks like um, recording is already going. So Chris or Amy must have done that start is for us. So I'll call the, the meeting in order then with the uh, first order of business comments from the public related to items on the agenda or items that like added. Is there any public that would like to speak? I know Mike's on Zoom. I don't know if he's got anything to say. He says hello so far to everyone. <coughs> I guess hearing none, we'll, we'll move on to approve the minutes from the November 17th meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next, we got the safety share with Tom. Where do we begin with it, people? I tell you. <laughs> uh, you know, one of the things I noticed today as I was sitting in my lazy boy looking outside is that uh, cars going past the house. And I would say, Eight out of 10 of them had the snow cleaned off, but you can tell the ones that don't have it and where it could be uh, a safety hazard. And then it's it's time management because today is, is the perfect storm in the fact that you could have got up this morning and looked at your, your alarm that didn't go off because you had a power outage, <laughs> and now you are late. And how do we deal with being late? We and go look, faster. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the bad thing. So, and then, then you probably go out and like me, I always like to have some water. Now it makes it icy. So you get out there and you start doing that. But if you don't have the time, you start rushing. And then, then you get in the car and start to go. And I was doing good coming here and I had my time and everything. And then guess what happens? I'm a little bit early, school buses. Yeah. Which will then make you have a tendency to hurry up. I got to get there, and one gal pulled around me and took off like a bat. So, it just kind of a reminder it's that time of year. And you know, as soon as we start rushing, that's when the, the uh, opportunity for accidents take place. So, try to give yourself enough time and uh, take your time. And uh, as of now, I am never linked to anything I go to because. <laughs> I'm just not late anymore. <laughs> I don't do it. I've been to where you had to get to work on time before the bell rings, and there's really no reason for that. I, uh, I don't have that anymore, but I think that uh, you know, time management becomes this time of year comes bad. And, and not only that, is it's dark out all the time. I mean, it's dark, I go to sleep. If it's the play, I wake up. It's barely <laughs> light now. I barely woke up. So. That's really all I have. Just keep your minds on the task of what we're doing so that uh, we do it safely. Next, we got the committee chair report. I just like to wish everybody happy holidays. Be safe. Go wait two months. That's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard, though. <laughs> Next, we go to the fair association. I don't think Mike's here. I don't know, Jody, if you want to just show me. Have you given a report or should we just see if we can come next month? Because I know he always brings the, the financials. Yeah, I've got the financials with me tonight. Um, okay, if you can do it, that, that's so, that Yeah, I don't know if he had other things he wanted to report on, but I've got, yeah, I've got the financials. We had our annual meeting um, last week, so um, I can share those. Um, wearing a couple hats today. Most of you know that I work in the extension office as administrative support, so it helps get the Zoom and things going. But outside of my job um, here at the extension office, on my own time, I volunteer for the county fair. Um, and I am um, the um, treasurer for the fair association. So just make that distinction for the record and the recording. I'll hand out these two. So our fair association had our annual meeting on December 8th, and that's when we um, hand out our official um, financial report of the year. Mm -hmm. So good news with the county fair is um, we had another very successful year, both financially and attendance wise, and with programming and entertainment that we were able to provide. Yeah. Is, is she active in the meeting? She says that she still doesn't. Maybe somebody didn't let her in. Um, I don't see her. 
on the list. Is there some way you can send her? Maybe her link is it? Is it working? She sees us. Did she hear us talk? Oh, she, she can see. Oh, doesn't she's seem like she's active. Is she District Five by any chance? I don't know who that. Sorry, um, I don't know. Do that. you know what her district is? I would think it's Mike's District Twenty, so she must be. If there's only two in there, <clears throat> that must be her. Is she? She can text. She says, uh, yes, I see you all. Ask her if she's District 5. <laughs> District 5. Okay. Does she need to speak? or? Uh, she just didn't think that she was active. Okay. Yep, we can see her. And she's muted, but. Can she hear us? What's that? Can she hear us? She can hear and see us. Oh, she unmuted. Hi, Kay, are you there? I am here, thank you. Thank you, Awesome, we can hear you. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Okay. Sorry, train of thought leaves very easily on the yeah. table today. The train has left the station. <laughs> the train has left the station. Um, so what I handed around the Staples packet is the detailed financial report that our accountant um, helps us prepare every year. So that lists everything, everything. Um, the um, bigger sheet with the pie charts is, is my summary of what that report says. Um, so I'll just kind of start there as our overview um, because it just kind of gives that um, higher level big picture of things. So overall, the fair um, took in four hundred. dollars $30,000. Okay, we're doing really well on some of these bigger numbers. I haven't had to say in relation to them there yet. So $438,900 in income. Um, our expenses for this year were $356,145. So we were to the good um, $82,700. So part of what we have still been recovering from over the over the last several years is the fair operated in debt for a number of years. So in 2019, there was a newer board that took over. Um, and at that time, they were close to $100,000 in debt. So that had gotten paid off um, over the years. So we have intentionally been setting our budgets the last couple of years so that we hopefully have a little bit of a surplus. What we're building up is a rainy day fund so that when there is inclement weather, we still have all our expenses, but we don't have any income <laughs> or as much income. So that rainy day fund should protect us for future like bad years where we can pull that from. Otherwise we get into debt, every fair after is continuing to be impacted. So we've been trying to really prepare for our future. So having how that- these, How do these numbers compare to, I realized you know, yep. you know, we were pretty well shut down <clears throat> for COVID. So not counting COVID, going back, mm -hmm. how do these numbers compare in terms of income from previous fairs when we actually had fully open fairs? Yeah, there, um, I might have to pull that up ex exactly. Um, compared to, um, I can, our, sorry, the staple packet with the financial report yeah. from the um, accountant does compare to um, last year, the 2021 fair. Um, so on page three of seven, what's marked as page three of seven, um, so we had 438,000 in income this year. In 2021, we had 309,000 in income. And both of those years, our county aid package was the same amount from, from you guys. So there wasn't a difference there. So we're up about 130,000, 140,000 roughly. From 2021. 2021, we um, experienced what we thought was a COVID bump, meaning there was canceled in 2020. In 2021, any outdoor event saw record attendance just because people were trying to get out to stuff. Mm -hmm. So, one of our big goals was to maintain that bump in attendance into 2022. Um, <laughs> overall, it's looking like we did that, you know, both financially and attendance wise, where we, we were able to keep. Um, attendees coming out again. So maybe having the COVID, having the fair shut down for a year, people yeah. realize how much the fair has always been to them. Let's yeah. get back to this. Yeah. 
Um, so our total expenses we were anticipating, you know, being able to have a higher, higher. Um, so if you're comparing total expenses, um, 336,000 compared to in 2021 to almost 221,000. So we also intentionally were trying to spend more money to grow and make the fair bigger and better for folks um, and things like that. So we also were up in expenses about um, 100. You know, a hundred thousand there. So what did you actually get for your hundred thousand? Yes. So um, um, your pie charts here kind of break down. Um, the top one is the income. So it breaks down where we get our income from. And I will answer your question as well more specifically, Steve. Just highlights on that. This big like yellow orange. And I apologize, we didn't have these electronically for the folks that are on the on the <laughs> computer end, but the biggest chunk of money that we take in, 43% of our income was from ticket sales, what we call entrance fees, memberships, daily tickets, that kind of thing. The next biggest chunk, 25% of that 400,000 we're talking about came from county and state aid. Um, so just to give a breakdown of you know, how much support you guys are giving you know, versus where we're earning it and things. Um, we get um, some of the concessions like the beverage tents, beer tents. Um, we get a fair amount of profit from that. That's 13%. Um, and community sponsors is at 7%, which is percentage wise is a little bit down from other years, but um, monetarily <laughs> they're up, if that makes sense. So we just got so many more ticket sales that if you're comparing it percentage wise, it's down, but do straight dollar wise, our sponsorships continue to grow. So just big picture of where the money came from. So where we spend our money, 37% of that, the biggest chunk, um, it goes into entertainment. And entertainment includes our grandstand shows. Um, we have one every night. So two tractor pulls, a rodeo, and a demo derby. Um, it also includes our um, music village. Um, so we have local bands that play in our music village every, every night. And then um, the big increase this year was in family entertainment. So um, shows that are going on a few times a day throughout the fairgrounds. Um, we call it family entertainment. Mostly it's kids and families that like to do those kinds of shows. What's what's so, the, what's the typical one that's with the family entertainment? What would that be? Yeah, so our most popular one this year was a circus that we had come in. So it was Amer America's Got Talent Act that came in and set up a whole circus area. They had a big steel cage that they drove motorcycles around oh, the wow. inside of. They had um, some dogs that did like tricks and stuff like that. They had a high wire act. So they sort of, it was a variety show that okay. they did a whole bunch of stuff. So we had pig, duck and um, pig, duck and goat races. So pigs oh, run around God. the track. <laughs> We had a lumberjack, so they set up a full pool for part of their setup where they had logs in the pool, and so they did some axe throwing, some tricks on the logs. Um, we have uh, <laughs> we have um, a trout pond that the kids like. That's been um, uh, something we've done for a long time. Uh, Nick's kids shows comes in and does like um, singing and dance with the kids. Um, we had a ready, set, grow, which was more agriculture based one. Um, again, another kids show where the kids come sit down on a map and he does some comedy stuff um, to teach agriculture education. So, so that would be some of the examples of that. We had some more things we brought in on Veterans and Seniors Day this year. So Mad Dog and Merrill did some grilling demonstrations in the expo building. Um, We've had two badan has been popular for a number of years, so that was something we still have. We had a horse pull, um, um, horses pull weights, you know, like sort of Clydesdale type horses pull weights, and they have a contest for that. That's been a longstanding tradition. Um, and I think there was one other, I thought there was another new thing we brought in for Seniors Day this year. Um, we had Bingo, that was a community group that ran that for Seniors Day. So. Um, so, uh, yeah, so entertainment expenses, that's where a lot of the money goes back into. Um, grounds is the next biggest chunk, 19%. Um, and that one, we can look at some of the specifics on the, 
on the accountant's report that um, that I brought along as well. But grounds is everything from paying um, utilities. You know, we pay parks back for any utility expenses we have, so it includes that. We have a lot of things we have to rent and bring in: porta potties, hand washing sinks, bleachers, tents, um, generators, and big light poles. Like throughout the whole whole facility, we need more light at night. So, um, so it includes those kinds of rentals, skid loaders and other machinery. In the grandstand, they have to redo the track for each type of event we come in. What the rodeo needs is different than what a tractor pull needs in terms of surface. So there's a lot of equipment to make that happen. So that just sort of gives you some of the grounds expenses. The third biggest chunk then, 17% of what we spent our money on was salaries and services. So everything in here, um, includes anybody we paid to come deliver a service at the fair, not the entertainment, but everything else. So we do have two officer positions on our board that receive um, stipends um, for some of the work they do. So that's a small part of that. Um, other things that are included in here, we give any- you mean, mean, you mean law enforcement? Oh, no, no sorry. So we have two <laughs> of our board, board of director officers do get oh. small stipends. So the president position on the fair association um, gets a stipend um, for putting, they put in significantly more hours than the other directors and we expect them to spend time year round on that. So we pay a stipend for that position. Um, and then the treasurer position, my position gets a small stipend as well. Um, so like our payroll expenses for those two positions is a total of $15,000 for the year just to give you a place where that is. Um, so other things, so you said officers, we do hire the sheriff's department to come out for security. So like they're another group that falls into there. So the expense for that is about $7,400, you know, back into the sheriff's department okay. here. Um, you know, we have our accountant that we have to pay. Um, we do have um, ambulance and fire service that comes. Um, that goes um, is usually local fire departments that we hire, Town of Oshkosh, I think um, um, Omro came out as well. They provide um, safety in the grandstand events. EMTs? Yeah, EMTs. So, <laughs> and, uh, you know, putting in the demo derby, you know, putting cars, fires in cars out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that, that kind of, you know, those are the most dangerous. <laughs> entertainment that we have out there. So they're there on site in the grandstand when those events are going on. Um, the sheriff's department is there, uh, well, 24 seven, not exactly 24 seven, but during all open hours of the fair. So, you know, from like nine in the morning until um, we close down the beer stand. So midnight or so. Um, and so they're walking around the grounds, just providing general crowd support and dealing with any issues that might come up. They do, um, the sheriffs are kind of fun because they do a lot of community building as well. So some of the officers really like to hand out like our fair sway, we have giveaways, you know, fun fun stuff or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they like just wandering the grounds and interacting with kids and families by giving away our, <laughs> our fair sway. So it's not just, you know, the negative interaction. Um, we do hire a cleaning service to come in and um, provide additional support cleaning bathrooms. The co county staff just doesn't have enough people for this big of an event. Um, so we play, pay those. Um, an electrician helps us out with a lot of stuff. So that's some of the things that fall into that salary thing. The other thing that's kind of key there, we do try to give back as much to service groups. So I had mentioned like the local fire departments. Um, we do, this year we did um, have about $8,800 that went back to service groups. So the, um, a lot of service groups did bartending in the bar stand. So we pay them for that. Um, and they did, we had a couple groups that did parking this year. So we pay them for that. So we try to, you know, get it back to other, some of the money at least back to other community groups if they're willing to help out for some fundraising. Um, I did, there's one more I think I had for this morning. Um, some of these I already talked about, but I'll give you a sheet. Some of the highlights I thought that you might be interested in as a group in particular. Um, 
about a little bit the county aid package that um, we got for this year was a hundred thousand um, dollars we do reimburse parks department parks department provides all the cleaning supplies that any of our cleaning crews use so we reimburse for those expenses um, then the utilities we pay are the electric and gas the sewer and water and we're on site for about three weeks so you know we pay for our usage for those entire three weeks um, sheriff's department for their security so about 17,000 helps cover, you know, expenses where we're, you know, um, getting back to other county departments. Um, I said our kids and family entertainment was, was um, you know, one of our focuses this year. And we felt like that was direction from, from, from your team, as well as the county executive's office that, to see more things for families to do at the fair to make the value of their ticket price better. <laughs> um, um, we didn't raise any ticket prices this year at all, even though we provided a lot, a lot more for that same ticket price. Um, so the kids and family, um, we intentionally budgeted to spend, you know, up to about fifty thousand extra in that, mm -hmm. with some of the extra money that we're getting from the county. So those, those kids and family programs that you were discussing a few minutes yep. ago, there was no additional charge for people to attend. No. Yep horse ducks ducks and geese and yeah whoever racing pigs pigs and yeah. no. face painting and the balloons and yeah yeah phenomenal yeah. yeah and we had a lot of positive comments that families really they said like in past years they'd walk around the fair and in half an hour they'd be done <laughs> and so this year families were really finding that they could spend the whole whole day there you know they spent their half hour walking around the barns to see the animals you know and then a lot of the little individual shows we had, they're about a half hour, half hour shows, you know, so that we try to rotate those so they could go from one show to the next, spend some time on the rides, you know, they're tired from the rides, they can come relax at something else without the kids getting bored. <laughs> so the rides are also included in there, like they, they pay Mr. Edge 35% of the ticket, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. The rides are included. Rides are included. So once you actually yeah. get in, other than food yeah. and the games, you have no expense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but I think that Mr. Ed is looking for a little more than thirty-five percent. Yeah, <laughs> pretty sure that'll be going up this year. We uh, don't have any final contracts with them, but yeah, well, and um, everything has gotten so expensive. If you can imagine moving all of that big equipment and all the semi trucks and staff and all that stuff, and the cost of gas, diesel, diesel fuel. Um, yeah, there's they'll need a bigger cut. But the, I think the good news in our finances finances is. That we have room to pay them what they need to make this work and be profitable for them you know so we're not trying to hoard money away i think that's been the struggle most people are used to we every year we spend out every dollar we have and then go in debt you know so it's been a little bit of an adjustment for some folks as we talk about how much money we have you know but again we're anticipating we're trying to build that fund <laughs> So that when there's bad years, we have money to cover those expenses without endangering future fares. And also we're anticipating all expenses continuing to go up, you know, so. Some of the rides, that, like a lot of fares charge for the rides and they're five, $6 a ride. You can only get $15 for the whole ticket. Mm -hmm. And if you pre-buy it, you can get it for 12. So it's like, if you ride two or three rides, you, you got you your, your ticket, you ticket paid for, for so it. everything else you do is free. You know, but it's hard for the fair to make money when we're only charging fifteen dollars for a ticket. They don't charge for parking. They don't charge for the grandstands. You know, once you get your twelve dollar ticket, if you buy it in advance, that's all you have to pay. And you don't have to eat on the grounds. You can basically go back to your car and yeah. you know take a couple lawn chairs and eat by your trunk like a little picnic and go back in. You know, so it's cheap entertainment yeah. for a family of four. You can buy it for sixty dollars for a whole day. I would say the last couple of fairs I mean, is it is that big? Concessions that run by the 4 H kids and the <laughs> those, are, those are yeah, good the meals. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the different the Farm Bureau. Yeah. Yeah. Farm Bureau. Yeah. 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 I think that's one thing that's up for negotiation with our carnival this year. They they want they would rather be charging for rides instead of the all-inclusive ticket that we need to do. So that's one of the things we're still negotiating 
with them. I don't know if we can give them a big enough cut that they wouldn't do that. <laughs> I think if, um, if, people, but, if people have been used to getting buying a ticket and getting all their rides, that's going to be many will come in and not realize suddenly yeah you've got to have extra money on you because the rides are going to cost you something yeah. and uh, i hope we can negotiate giving them a little more rather than trying to go to yeah. take for a ride yeah. you know what I, I have a, i have a question um and and it's do we have a the fair goes on for five days doesn't it is there a one-time price for all five days to get in or are the tickets individual for each day we we have both so there is a um a membership pass that includes all all five days of the fair the only caveat with that is that it does not include rides so but a person who's just coming and going from the fair to see Grandstand music, family entertainment, kids and the animals, the shows that we have can buy a one five day pass, come and go as much as they want. And those have been priced for many, many, many years now. Those are $30, 30 slash 35 for the whole week. We run an early bird discount where they're $30, 35 if you purchase them, you know, at, in July slash August. At, at what level is the decision made to increase the ticket price? Um, the I think it would fall with the board of directors of the fair association. So um, um, our group is the one that, um, you know, sets the budget and negotiates the contracts and all of those kinds of things. So, um, you know, at this point, um, you know, we've been the ones to make the decision making on, on, on how we can make that all work. You know, can we get enough money in to cover additional expenses and keep the ticket prices the same? Um, you know, do, do we want to raise them, lower them, all that kind of thing. The only thing that gets tricky is our carnival could say, um, you know, because there's somebody we're hiring in, they could say, we are not going to do an all-inclusive ticket. We refuse to do it. So, you know, our ticket prices are going to be fill in the blank, take it or leave it, you know, and so then we could decide to hire them or not go to another carnival or not. <laughs> um, you know, adjust in some other way with them. So we have our statewide convention, um, which is all the county fairs throughout the state happens in the beginning of January now. Um, and it's in Wisconsin Dells and all of the various, I'll say entertainment, the carnivals, the grandstand shows, the kids and family acts, they all come to the convention and advertise their services. So Carnival. yeah, so that's where we will probably have our final negotiations with our carnival. If we're not coming to something that sounds similar to what we've had in prior years, you know, then, then we might have to come back to the drawing board here locally. Did that Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it, it does. Um, I what comes to my mind is going to the rides up in Green Bay. Mm -hmm. And that is an all inclusive for you to be able to ride those rides all day. And it kind of sets a precedent in, in my head for saying, hey, that's not to say that's how I want it to proceed. I'm just saying, you know, I we, we go up there and you get you get what 25 cent tickets and you buy five dollars and you're there for the entire day um it, that's kind of where my my thoughts come from as far as how this these things happen thank you i appreciate what you said yep. i got one suggestion for the board too is what i've had numerous people especially seniors asking why we don't either offer VIP or senior parking and they're willing to pay five dollars but like the first four roles could be VIP or senior parking you know when you're 75 years old and you're walking back by the fence because you want to see the tractor pull at night you know it's hard for them to walk yeah. on even ground yeah and I, I would think if we took the first four roles and we want to call it senior <coughs> parking or we want to call it VIP parking and charge five dollars at, at least somebody that's elderly can have a little easier walk you know it isn't so bad even in the daylight but at night 
they're basically mm -hmm. tripping hazards and you know i mean their hips break so much easier than ours yeah well, i shouldn't say ours well, i'm 66 hey, so. you know, <laughs> this, <laughs> i can still consider myself young i guess you know but I, I, i'm not i'm retired so but i've had several people ask me why we wouldn't do something like that to make it more convenient for the elderly to you know you don't have to keep many roles but four roles yeah and you know what yeah. It just makes it easier for them. I could see a family wanting that too, like somebody who's pregnant or has a lot of kids. I mean, it's a lot to navigate. Yeah, and it's so dark out there. And, you know, sometimes it's like last you get the wet. And, you know, when you're elderly like that, it's hard, you know, and they just, it's hard for them to get there. So they just yeah. ask me to, to pass it along to the, the fair board that, you know, they would appreciate some either VIP parking, and we'll pay you $5 or senior parking, yep. you know. There's something that they can get a little closer to the to the gate and not have yeah. to walk from the yeah good idea yeah that rolls into my thoughts right now there's improvements going on over at the fairgrounds mm -hmm. when i hear that you're bringing in generators for additional lighting would it not be appropriate to talk with the people doing the layout there to see if something can be incorporated into that lighting layout so they don't have to bring in generators and that that could be as easy as light standard up there already adding another light with a controller on it that can be either on or off and that's for lighting and then the second thing is with the electrical work going on out there uh hiring an electrician well maybe there's some things that they can do now that wouldn't add that much more but would save cords running over the ground yeah it's safety issue yeah i think um and i can't speak to all of all of that obviously in, in a lot of detail but some of the so they did some upgrades on two two lots this past year that included the lighting and included the um um what the storm water runoff um it included making bigger um better lots those were improvements that benefited us greatly i can't speak to everybody else that uses the grounds but those big lots provided um, much more ability to do camping. Um, people like to come in and camp in their big campers. And I know that applies to a lot of the horse shows that happen throughout the summer um, for the, for the um, at the facility. I'm just gonna look quickly. I think we were able to, in terms of revenue, that's a place where we had um, additional revenue. So our camping, we raised our camping prices a little bit to offset some electrical costs, costs, but our income last year for camping was um, $9,600 in 2021. We were up over $19,000 in our income this year for the camping. Um, so again, that's a revenue, another revenue stream that we're bringing in. I mean, they're using, they're using water, they're using electric, they're using, there's some cost to that. Yeah. But that was largely due to because in 2021 we offered all the spots we could but having those additional for the big campers instead of in the grass kinds of spots having those additional spots really gave us um, a lot more room to offer more camping for our folks so i guess the short story is i would hope that the parks department yeah. and them have a dialogue going on and say okay is yeah. there anything we can do while we're doing this because it's a lot Agreed. easier to do it up front when it's on paper than when everything's in the ground and you say, oh, I wish I would have. Yeah. And that area where we did the parking in Camby, we didn't have to have additional lighting over mm -hmm. in that area. That was set up in a way that worked for our events the whole time. So in our conversations with parks, you know, I know that they're looking across all the all the events, you know. And so once most of the events need something, then it definitely mm -hmm. reaches the, you know, improvement level. I think they're putting in a trout pond, aren't they, in the front part of the parking lot? <laughs> it's called the water retention, but there's a chance there and call the trout pond. We got to get that drain out of the building from the Orchard Committee, then we'll be doing that. We're going to have to take over the trout fishing. Yeah. That's one of the next ones that should be coming forward to you. But yeah, the, the drainage in those in the new areas, I mean, vast improvements. I mean, there were some unintended consequences because the whole grounds didn't get upgraded at one time, but I mean, so, and they're not paved, right? That's gravel yet. They're still gravel. That's good. Yeah. It follows the water. To, 
But they actually still charge you for the water runoff the same as if it's paved. Yeah. Or storm water runoff. It's, it's just the same box. It's, yeah. it's gravel. If it's not grass, it's still charged for storm water runoff. Yeah, but you put a pond in there for it to handle it all. It should not be any additional it's, charge to see. We pay yeah. hundreds of thousands of dollars for storm water runoff. Uh, solid waste is the same thing. Well, I did see in, in chat here too that Mike says, um, Steve, could you ask someone from Fair Association to come to a parks committee in the very near future? So I know parks generally has their annual user group meeting January, February, early in the year. And that's where we do have a lot of those conversations with all the events and parks about here's what parks is planning, what needs are you guys seeing? Is it starting to, you know, so I mean, especially the last, you know, four or five years, we've really experienced some 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 good relationships with yeah. parks department. So as long as you're talking, that's all you can ask. Yeah. The county's putting a generator in for eight hundred thousand dollars. I don't know if it'd be possible to run power off of that to some of the carnivals and stuff. And then also I, I know the milk house didn't work last year and we have never gotten back that nobody from the fair has ever gotten back to us to tell us what's wrong with the milk house. Mm -hmm. So if, if nobody tells the parks why the milk house isn't working, yeah. it's not going to work next year. Yeah, <laughs> correct. Yeah. Okay, so what's we, we need to know what's wrong with the milk house so yeah. we can try to fix it for you. Yeah. You know, we asked Rick and Rick said, well, he didn't know what's wrong with it. And nobody from the fair board has followed up and told yeah. him what's wrong with it. So like last year, he didn't use the milk house because it didn't work. And I, I guess I would like to see it work. So, yeah. you know, if we know what it is, we can try to appropriate the funds to fix it. Yeah, agreed. And I think we're one. So there's, I don't have the specific answer for you because I'm not on that particular team, but it has to do with um, tanks and stuff that collect <laughs> the milk from the cows when we milk them. Um, do we use, is the milk usable? It is not because, because there are no buyers, the, yeah. none of the dairies will buy the milk from the fair anymore. Okay. That used to be something we did. It's not something they do anymore. Okay. And I don't know all the details for that either, but we have we have hit up every every single place and they just don't do it anymore. I think it's too much of a risk yeah. for them to do that for fairs in general, not just us. So if we have to dispose of it, we aren't able to use it anywhere. Um, how so do dispose, how do you dispose of milk? What do you do with it? Three. You just pour it down the drain. Okay. So some of that, I think we're still in debate about how necessary some upgrades okay. might be okay. because we were able to accomplish milking our cows and disposing of the milk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Appropriately, I mean, I think we disposed of it. I mean, we disposed of it in an appropriate way. So I think we're still in debate about whether or not we have to have the upgrade. And then if we're the only ones using it, is that where some of our own money could go to, you know, right, yeah. to even things up? Point. I mean, I don't want to say that on behalf of the whole board, but that's just some of the discussions going on. You know, what we always discuss. <clears throat> What improvements are really the responsibility of the fair association versus the parks? And it generally comes down to if we're the only ones needing a specific thing, sometimes that falls back to us. But I guess the biggest thing is you guys should be meeting almost regularly. Now, as long as you have an agenda, something to talk about, okay, meet. Yeah. You don't just meet just to, to meet. meet, but that versus the other way where all of a sudden the fair is here to say, well, I wish I would have. Yeah, because this lighting thing jumps right out at me, and the electrical thing is there could be options there. Yeah. To well, and like power. Light Fest is the other big event that would use, I mean, they use much more power than we do. So they're another one that's bringing in tons and tons of generators and lights. So if there is some, yeah. And that's where the Parks Department has a relationship where what, what's our bare minimum we want to provide, and then you have to go above there. But, yeah. you know, if you can get some cords buried so they're not tripping hazards, that's a plus in my book. I think the last, I, you know, I know there's been discussions about what exactly is going to happen in the next phase of improvements. Um, you know, the last plans that were drawn up had a lot of electrical improvements in some of the vendor mm -hmm. areas and things where we need it. So there's sort of a row down the grandstand, you know. <laughs> on that road that we really could use a lot more electric so but yes i agree we'll Just continue, continue discussions yep and adam's got the 
diagram. I mean, so anybody can look at it. Yeah. Uh, what the next phase is. It's like three and a half million dollars. So yeah. I think your electrician would look at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, so I, the rest of the last sheet I handed out was just give you a picture of like, I know the junior fair is something that, you know, where the 4-H and FFA and scouts can show is an important piece to folks. So I just put a couple pieces on there too, of, you know, what really the costs are specifically just for that. I mean, you know, obviously a chunk of all the costs go towards, you know, having the facility, but um, some of the costs that are specific to them. Um, and then how much money we bring in related to the junior fair. We, you know, lots of people want to support the junior fair. So we do get a, um, sponsorships and things towards that. So, you know, that gets close to um, paying for itself some years. So. What do you see as the biggest, biggest need in the future for the, actually like the parks department, what would the parks department be able to? That's a mic question. No, Sorry. It's, 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 it's good weather. Yeah, good weather. If you could put us in a in an uh, uh, climate controlled bubble, <laughs> I know, know rain zone. I know we talked about building another barn because you know for the horse show sometimes there's not enough space, mm -hmm. and I would think that that would be a benefit to the to the fair to have another barn. Well, they paid for the lights to have them change it out, and they're still working on those, right? And that's what the new year. Well, nothing goes fast. <laughs> that's why you, you know, start and once you get the new lighting in there, that's going to enhance your presentation. Now, you might have to do more washing and cleaning because they can see what's dirty now, <laughs> but those lights are just sitting in there. And that's to me is, is part what you're looking for presentations so people can see what's going on, they feel safe. And yeah. So the whole ventilation thing taken care of, not to mention again, where they got the big fans going. And is that, is that an ongoing issue or is that? Well, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, when the, all the animals need different levels of cooling and heating and ventilation and stuff like that. So like we bring in a lot of our own fans to set that up, but what horses need at their shows is different than sure. what we need. So what the racing pigs need. Yeah, that one for <laughs> Yeah, there's endless. I mean, you know, the 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 food court building, the different court building, you know, that could probably use some upgrades mm -hmm. um to some of what's happening there. And that's always a discussion of is that a 4-H building, is that a fair building, is that a parks building? You know, no. there's some things out there that it's like the parks owns the ground and then what's on the ground is maintained by somebody else. So you no, know, the county just or we, we have monies. 17 million for an assessment of all the buildings in the county. Did that not apply? Sure, sure so the, the, the board, no, I don't know where that is exactly. It hasn't been approved yet, right? The building study has been approved. It has been. So that should be happening. So again, now when they start looking at the buildings, even though that you don't own them, you use them. So you should. They should get input on what's going on, right? Right. Any building that the county owns, we maintain. So if we own that building, we maintain it. Yeah. So if, if there's something structurally or you know wrong with it, it needs to be repaired. Yeah. Or come down. Yeah. And build a new one. Right. You know, so it's like, but if we're not aware of it, you know, I mean, yeah. the parks department doesn't use that building. So they would have no idea of the condition of that building unless yeah. somebody tells them that, you know. Well, in the, the concession stand specifically, you know, I, other events use that for fundraising and stuff when they're there. So, you know, I, probably could be upgraded. I the general the general comments that we get back, and again, I would rely on an actual like somebody determining whether it's user error or building error, right? <laughs> um, but the general comments that we get back is electric could be upgraded there as well, which that's maybe already included to when we get to that side of the of the ground. Um, you know, and the windows on it are just old, you know, the old screen windows and don't really work with what what and how we're serving these days, you know, the windows would be it would I don't know that it's structurally unsound, but no. Not the, not user friendly anymore. So again, is that the biggest the biggest concern in terms of all the buildings and things like that? But yeah, it's 
and that that's one where I think other groups are renting that building out too for fundraising at other events throughout the year. So they said they own 17 buildings, but I'm assuming they're thinking that that's one building, everything that's over there. The fairgrounds is one building. I think they every building is a building. Well, there has to be one in 17 buildings then. Yeah, we got a word 17 there. But anyhow, it's just it's happening. Yeah. And and it comes down to it again. Communication is so important. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's nice about Zoom is you can go to there without going there. Yeah. But it takes time. And that's yeah. uh, a commodity that nobody has enough. Yeah. Yeah, I know this probably doesn't fit into maybe the monies you're talking about with this, but probably the greatest need is always staff. Yeah. <laughs> Which probably doesn't fit into this, but I think you know when you were talking about some projects still not getting, you know, still not all the way done or whatever. Staffing seems to be yep. the issue, and again, not to run the fair specifically, but just the general, you know. It, it, and again, they've hired; they haven't gotten people, you know. So it depends, but it's you know things like the grass cutting and you know having the lights in that were bought and all of that stuff, you know, impacts the events quite a bit when we aren't able to accomplish it. It impacts it. But then what you have to do is you have a certain amount of uh, manpower available and then you have to figure out what they're doing to know when you're exceeding that impact because now yeah. then you have to make a decision do we cut services yeah do we hire a contractor right what do we do yeah but we're not at that point yet i don't see that as a company looking at that that way yet do you well the facilities is thinking of hiring some people to plow the sidewalks but we did raise the seasonals to fifteen dollars an hour mm -hmm. from I think they were at twelve or thirteen. So I, I would think that we'll get more. And then yeah. for the parks department, we've lowered it so they don't have to be eighteen. So you can be sixteen with a driver's license and cut grass. So with a little luck, they get their full team. Team. Yeah. And normally we don't have a full team. Yeah. So if you're supposed to have eight seasonals and you got four, it takes that much longer to cut the grass because. Yeah. You know, we already <clears throat> hire off the bolt landing. Somebody else cuts the bolt landing. You know, so we concentrate on what we can cut. And yep. unfortunately, if you don't have people, I mean, the county as a whole, the last I looked, we're 156 people short out of a thousand. Right. So right. we're running about 15 percent <laughs> short. Yeah. So yeah. You, you get what it you impacts you know, everyone. The highway yeah. department I know is five class <laughs> two class twos and a mechanic short. They just had a big slope for them. Every person in that department has a route. Yeah. So when you're seven people short, the other people have to each take a part Do of that it. road because yep. the road's got to be plowed, you know, and it, it's just the, the sign yeah. of the times. There just is no people to work. Uh, yeah. You know, sometimes you, you look at it, where do they all go? You know, before the <laughs> pandemic, we had all kinds of workers. <laughs> and yeah. So, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. 4-H. Mm -hmm. Is there an avenue where 4-H kids could provide some of these services and get paid? I mean, we, as far as park services or our jobs and county jobs in general, I mean, yeah, we can certainly advertise those things out to our kids, and we have done that in the past. If you have time. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest problem to get to the job, because there's a labor pool out there that's probably willing to work, but how do you find it? That puts more pressure on you in your spare time, which you don't have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of those 4 H kids are so overbooked. But they don't anyway. Yeah, about the only thing going is you can pay them $15 an hour. There's something that might have yeah. it. And if it's not a job, it's every day. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's mowing grass once a week. Yeah. And like when I mow grass, I go, if I miss something this week, I'm gonna get it next week. <laughs> I don't go back, it doesn't look pristine all the time. Mm -hmm. So I, it's really a revenue stream that those people might get. It might help us <laughs> if we can. Yeah. Here I am. I just think up all these good ideas. <laughs> and I can't. <laughs> <do anything. laughs> I'm like a maintenance vehicle on the road the other day. It's that big thing on the back of the truck that says, oh, we're hiring. We're hiring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody needs people. I mean, yeah. I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. I'm on the personnel committee and it's like we try, we raise wages, and yeah. it doesn't really matter. I mean, we raised the CNAs a dollar and a quarter, and we were 29 short. A year later, we were 39 and a half short. So the dollar and a quarter did nothing. We, yeah. we got no more workers by raising the pay. My, yeah. my daughter used to be a CNA at Parkfield. This was a couple of years back, and 
the, the, the hard part about Park View is mandatory overtime. Yeah. It's, that's the killer, I think. <laughs> well, it is. I mean, yeah. But it's like when the second shift CNA calls in sick. Yeah, what do you do? What do you do? You yeah. can't say, well, yeah, you can go home and now you get no care for $8. Right, you know? right. So I know. It's, it's like it's a, one of those situations yeah. where, you know, it, yeah. you, you're just stuck in. They don't have enough staff to have any call-ins mm -hmm. because everybody they have is working. You know, right. when they get yeah. that training facility up and running, hopefully we can train some and recruit out of a high school, you know, mm -hmm. so we get new CNAs that are wanting to, to get in that profession. And then they can work their way into an RN or you know, from there. But right now, it's 165 bed nursing home with 105 residents because we don't have the staff. Yeah, they created yeah. a pathway to obtain an RN license of some type, you know, whether it's, yeah, however that pathway works. Yeah, so, I mean, that's what they that need to be, do. Yeah. And that way they, they can promote from within. But yeah, we have to solve that problem. You know, you just can't continue yeah. to have. Well, and we feel it too. So we weren't. Yeah, it's not a <laughs> certainly not a complaint because we feel like we're in it too. But yeah, on the fair association side, our full board of directors can be up to 19 people. So when we just had our elections at our annual meeting, so we have 13 of our 19 spots filled. So that's six of you know six of our work crew for fair week down too, which is where we've been for the last year or two. It's been dropping off. So uh, yeah, we certainly. Too. What do we offer? And it's volunteer. I mean, it's volunteer for the most part. We have a couple, you know, like I said, of the essential functions that have to be done. So we pay a little bit for those. Um, but yeah, it's volunteer. So what can we offer volunteers mm -hmm. to help compensate for their time to try to get more people to? And that question is being asked to all everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, Mike. Uh, this is uh, human resources. Right? Hey, Collar, you know, he's trying to do that, but what <clears throat> he doesn't have any time to do it. <laughs> so, there we sit 73 beds short and staffing low, and nobody's to work at. I mean, uh, it's, it's sad, yeah. But we can do it, team, yeah. Steve, we're gonna go to work. We're going back to work. Yeah, back to work. Back to work. <laughs> we're hiring. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna do sure. more long. Retirement is gonna be a long time. Yeah. 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 Any yeah. other yeah. questions? Sure you with us, please. Let's be very careful. Thank you. Hopefully, it helps <laughs> oh, <I laughs> to know. To know, you know. Yeah, for not knowing you're going to do it, you did an excellent job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this particular portion of it, this particular portion of it, I present to other folks all the time. So, so yeah. well, I did not realize there was so much family, what, what we call family and kids entertainment things. I didn't realize all yeah. that was going on. That was. I would say last year we had about three things in that category, and this year we increased it to eight or ten things going on. So, so we're we able really to keep. Notice. Yeah, we're There's able to keep. To do. Yeah, the traffic in the um, expo building really was a huge increase, which helped for you know people to see the 4-H exhibits and the staff yeah. IR wing. I mean, we had what did we say? It was like 175 youth that participated in our 4-H activities, mm -hmm. which we've never had that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that was. Which you guys did a really nice job of providing an. A nice area. You and gave us that area. area. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it yeah. worked out well. Yeah. Well, and we moved our face painters and balloon twisters into the expo building full time to try to get traffic through. And then through a huge amount of traffic. Yeah. And, then and they liked they liked being in the climate control better than outside. Yeah. That works better for and those then for things. Us, it also benefited our basket raffle too because we were mm -hmm. basket raffle was between the face painting and the balloons and people were buying tickets mm -hmm. left and right. Oh, and good. That's everybody a, was benefiting. Or, yeah. yeah, our vendors. Yeah we're a lot happier yes to have people, people in the through. building the fox valley spinning guild came in and did demonstrations mm -hmm. of things oh and they were really good with our um, kids too that were in our activities. yeah we had some vendors that did hands-on demonstrations so we just yeah tried to and so now we have more people that are interested in in doing more things so being able to showcase the community stuff um uh, fox valley technical college is looking at doing some programming and things during the fair with us. So we're working on a partnership with them and what that would look like. Um, uh, Fox Valley Spinning Guild has signed up. The 
like the Oshkosh Public Library had put up like a story walk throughout the building. So just another thing to, you know, kind of draw people to the building. So they're looking at maybe offering some more of their hands-on programming at the fair to offer their services. So we're kind of happy with that too. It works for us to have some low cost entertainment, but we want to be a showcase of the, of the community organizations, you know, so being able to get them excited and pull them back into being a part of the fair. We're really happy about that. So. <clears throat> Yeah, moving on. Next, we'll go to the UW Division Extension Program Educator Report and Update. Yeah. Yeah. I had it right this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's for to say to me, yeah, Maya. I just got to remember the E instead of the I. Yeah, yeah. In my health records, they put in M E E A H. Yes. They do it they 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 right. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that extends spelling. Yeah. It's nice and shape. It's yeah. Nice. Anyways, I think I was here uh, back in May last, so two months ago. I just wanted to provide a few highlights of what I've done so far uh, during those months or just the last few months, some, some, some high level highlights. Um, you know, I've been working a lot with the Color Gold Business Association the last couple of years, helped build capacity with them and entrepreneurs of color in this, in this area. And it's really been um, showing some good success. They've gotten some good funding. I don't know if you've heard about this huge initiative from the state's office. It's called the Diverse Business Assistance Program. They actually partnered with the nonprofits on the Business Council to receive funding because Color Gold is not yet a nonprofit. They can't receive funding on their own yet. And they were awarded. So they're getting three years funding to do some good work with entrepreneurs of color. Um, it will be um, technical assistance, so reaching out to entrepreneurs of color to make sure that they have access to resources in the area. You know, there are a lot of business assistance providers here, but a lot of times, um, so this is kind of like a wraparound model that's been tested, being really good. It's called a community navigator program. <clears throat> There's also going to be some marketing support to these entrepreneurs. Um, with um, the, um, it's, it's called Shop BIPOC, so Shop with Black, Indigenous, People of Color, um, making sure that entrepreneurs of color are highlighted, that they get increased revenues, and et cetera. So I'm just really happy for them. I'm not doing as much with Colorful because they're now more of that on their own feet, um, but they're, you know, they're asking for my, my advice and I'm, I'm advising their committee um, as they're building their board. So that's really exciting. I'm still working with them on the Entrepreneur of Color Spotlight. That's happening twice a month, and that's with Color Gold and also the African Public Library. So that means we, we interview entrepreneurs of color throughout Northeast Wisconsin, mainly from, I would say, the Appleton, Oshkosh, Brown, um, Green Bay area, because that's where the leadership is from. Um, so you could watch those every month, twice twice a month, they're always really good. Like you always get really good insight to where this, these businesses are at, if they've received support, what support looks like for them. So you learn a lot about their journey and um, how they're growing their business. Back when I did the interviews, um, so from 2021, just look at the Facebook stats, okay? That could mean somebody watched this video for three seconds or they watched the whole thing. So, but we reached over 7,000 people back, back in 2021. And if you look at the um, the breakdowns of like where the followers are on the <clears> Facebook <throat> page, most are from Appleton, Oshkosh, Green Bay, and Fond du Lac. So we're getting reach all over the state because it's Facebook Live. You know, you could join in. My Swedish family will join in sometimes. They're like, "Oh, that was such a good interview." <laughs> there was an interview I did with oh. I don't know if you had the the griddle that um, gosh, what is it called now? Um, Star eyes peanut brittle. Anyway, they sell at the farmer's market. So it's a Ghana style brittle. Um, it's very good. They have a lot of different types and it's like cashews, peanuts, all the different nuts in a brittle style. Anyway, so I interviewed these two business owners last summer and um, I brought it back to Sweden. So I've been back to Sweden for uh, three years. And I went back this summer with my girls and they got to try it. My family did, and they had seen the interview. So anyway, I just think it's cool like how technology works these days that you're actually mm -hmm. able to like, oh yeah, you I know I know this business. And like they're like on the other side of the Atlantic. 
Um, anyway, I'm not doing interviewing right now. So Colorbolt is taking the lead and Appleton Public Library. So it's entrepreneurs of color interviewing entrepreneurs of color, which I think is really powerful too, because they have a lot more understanding of their journeys than I do, who is there to support business owners. But I'm just, I'm not a business owner, owner myself and I'm not a person of color. Anyway, so that's really, that's really great. This fall, I was very much engaged in the fast pitch competition. I don't know if you heard about this, but it's a competition that's happening um, actually all over Northeast Wisconsin. So it's 18 counties where there's, there's some counties that are not participating, but we're starting to see more, more representation from all these different counties. So the big organizer is New North, which is a, the Regional Economic Development Corporation. And um, Winnebago, Outagamie, and um, Bundlack County partners to do the fast pitch. It's at the Timber Rattler Stadium. And so it, we're like, we're drawing entrepreneurs from all these counties, and then they pitch. So we had 10 pitchers, or I don't know, 10 business owners pitching their, their ideas. Um, so they're not pitching a baseball game. Correct. <laughs> but, it, but, it is fun. <laughs> but it is fun to use that analogy. It is fun. Um, then they go to the next level, which is um, in Green Bay at the, at the um, why am I blanking the name? Um, anyway. Baseball stadium? No, no. Okay. So the, title, the, the title town tech. So they have like they have a lot of entrepreneurial support in Green Bay. So the the winners of the local pitches were able to go there and pitch at this beautiful this beautiful space. Um, we did get we get a got a winner from our region in Fond du Lac, and I, I don't don't know if you've been to Hang Ten. It's a little little restaurant in um, actually you. Right now, they just moved into the, a new space, but they were located in a gas station for the longest time. So it's, it's Hawaiian food, it's Asian food, um, and they had a really great understanding of their growth strategy. And th I think that's why they won. They had a lot of competition from like high tech, you know, apps and stuff like that, which often gets more attention. But this was a little mom and pop restaurant that won, which I thought was really, really cool from our area. Um, Another person who was going into, into the bigger competition um, was Hu Mo, and he is a Hmong entrepreneur from the Appleton Oshkosh area who had come up with a um, physical therapy app. So a way to do physical therapy um, kind of on FaceTime, but with, with much more high-tech technology. So you could in, um, meet with your physical therapist over you know, telecommunication saying, um, have, have this app be able to understand your emotions. So like, I don't know if you all have experienced physical therapy, but it's very particular with how you do your exercises. So the app would be able to track movements in a way to say, oh, you know, you're moving your arm a little bit off or, you know, anyway, he came up there, which I was really, really proud of. He was part of one of the uh, pre-pitch events that I had to coordinate. So these are workshops to help these entrepreneurs to set up for success before the event. And he was one of the, the finalists, which I'm really proud about. I'm hoping he'll um, get into another program in the Fox Valley um, where I'll get more mentorship to be able to figure out his next steps. Um, let's see. So that was really cool. That was really fun. Um, another thing I've been really involved with this fall is grant writing workshops. Um, myself and my colleague in Brown County, Patrick Nearing, and some other colleagues around the state that are community development educators has, have seen an increased demand for grant writing. So we put on a grant writing a workshop together on Zoom to recruit from our respective counties. And we've, we've seen a lot of, lot of, a lot of demand, like the first one we did in October, I didn't close the cap on the registration. So I was like, oh, there will be like probably 30, 40 people signing up. And then when I logged into my Zoom account, we had 90 people registered. <laughs> and I was like, what? But this is what happens when you do cross communication, you do cross marketing, right? On all your platforms. And we have pretty good, you know, I got to say like our extension office is like good with the Facebook marketing too, as well as the website. So the word, and now all the newsletters. So the word really got out. And so we saw the representation from nonprofits in the area. We saw local government. We also saw extension professionals that are helping with grant writing in various capacities. 
Um, and also businesses, businesses can get grants nowadays, you know, and so we just geared these workshops to be very general, just like get into grant writing to not feel so intimidated by it and to make sure people know that it's something you, you actually can do, you just need to know some basic skills. And then if you're interested in this, we do have another one scheduled on fe for February 15th, 10 to noon, but you'll find out more in uh, upcoming newsletters. Uh, some things that are coming up that I'm excited about is I'm uh, developing a curriculum that I've only piloted twice with a colleague um, last year. It's called Maximizing Su Success with Entrepreneurs of Color in Your Community. So it's geared toward any business professional. So like somebody who works with maybe at a chamber or an economic development corporation um, to work with entrepreneurs of color uh, and reach more success, meaning uh, to be able to meet their needs to be able to figure out ways to grow their businesses and to have a culturally responsive way of um, doing the, the type of business development work that they're already doing. So I'm getting support from an intern or research assistant from Northland College actually right now, which is really great. She's, she's a wonderful uh, collaborator. And I'm also hoping for actually statewide support from our Community Economic Development Institute there's been money coming in from the governor's office. Um, and we're just waiting for this MOU to be signed, but we're hoping to actually have a professional specialist work with me and a couple of other colleagues to get this launched and to be able to offer it in our county. Um, <clears throat> another thing that will happen next year is to work again with the Winnebago County Historic and Archaeological Society. I worked with them a little bit a couple of years ago to kind of refine their goals. And now they have had a lot of turnover on their board. So I think it's about half new, new people. And so um, I'm gonna help them get on track with their goals again uh, and to update their strategic plan. Like actually Catherine Nice went when they did. I think 2017 was the last revised update of that plan. So I think that's it for right now that I wanted to share with y'all. Any questions? Your ear should have been ringing about three months ago. That's when you were at a trustee meeting at University of Oshkosh Fox Valley campus, and they brought in some people to talk about, um, you're gonna have to help me out because I'm not good at this, uh, making businesses and then creating the businesses. And the university has six people that do all this and you your name because you've been working with them or yes was it fox valley tech did they come in the, the venture no, center this is university of wisconsin okay. that's that thing but they I talk very highly of you and oh nice yeah well i i do well especially during the pitch competition i did work a lot with the venture center um but i do have connections with the uws and, and that's good. business resources it is actually kind of strange though like I know UW Oshkosh, they have a small business development center on campus. So they want I, to actually, they want Autogamy Company and Winnebago Company to buy this building that's on the campus and they want to convert that into a small business where they could rent an office. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah. Really? They're going to I do need make to be chickens at the same this. time there. Yeah. They can get the eggs. <laughs> well, you know, you can both. That could be a food entrepreneur, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear this, and I would love to be more tapped into that because I think that is a need to get more wraparound service um, to entrepreneurs and to have more of a community space that is dedicated. I've spoken to two Black entrepreneurs from UW Oshkosh that have pretty thriving businesses, yet they did not know about SBDC being on campus, physically located on campus. So I'm like, there's something like there's a, a disconnect. disconnect. There's someplace. a disconnect because we do have a lot of resources in the community. Wow. Yet we do see that black and especially black and Latinx businesses are underperforming uh, if you compare with white business owners. But it'd probably be expected. First of all, they probably don't have a real good handle on the language, and they don't have the time to sit around and look for stuff and figure out what it's at. That's where people like you can help point them in the right direction language becomes can very be important because. Sure. It's like anybody, every businessman I talk to, I mean, you're either yes, sir, yes, sir. making money, right? And I like the one you're helping me out on, he's open four days a week, and then the fifth and sixth, no, five days a week, 
60 or say buying food to be open the next there's just no time it's like 24 7. Oh. yeah but then i think it also comes down to trust like who who becomes your mentor you know like i hear this all the time and if you listen to these interviews you get these handouts too you know a lot of times the mentors that entrepreneurs of color lean on are not going to be from the fcbc or from score these really you know solid business programs that are established in this area and they're 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 well run they're really good experienced folks they lean on family and friends for advice um and how, and how to grow their business there's nothing wrong with that right but what we do see is there's a direct correlation with if you have a, a more expanded business network you're going to have higher business success like growth rate revenue and all that stuff so the more you have a network or an ecosystem as we say in the economic development world, world um, you know, the more successful you'll be. I had a question, um, Mia. Um, with all your work with Color Bold and, and the diverse business assistance uh, programs and so on, has the Diversity Affairs Commission reached out to you at all with either, either questions about what's going on or advice for, what's, for what they're doing or anything like that? Have you had any contact with the Winnebago County Diverse Diversity Affairs Commission. I have not. Okay. I have not. Not so far. Okay. Does Kay have any comments? Do you have any comments, Kay? Can you? Um, just this is this is all so new to me, and I I I. <laughs> I've got no response as to why we haven't reached out, except to say that the commission is uh, struggling. So um, I, uh, it seems to me that if someone wanted support from us, that they might reach out to us as well. Um, what what can I say? Yeah, I'd be, I'd be happy to follow up if you want any of well, my support or guidance. There is the chairman. The chairman of our group is uh, Jared Longsign, um, and I believe that his name is available, his email and what have you, and he is the person who I would actually go about reaching out uh, reaching out to um i found him to be quite communicative uh, if you want me to reach out to you to tell you how to go about reaching out to him or figuring out how we go about doing this i'm happy to do that yeah maybe you can make an e-introduction like just send an email and include both of us <clears throat> okay happy to Oh, perfect. Thank you. Any other questions? We've done a lot. It's very, very good work. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'll walk there up in the implement area where I live. There we go. Next, we'll go to the extension administrator department report with Chris. Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, just have a couple updates that I want to share with you this morning. Um, couple of things um, just overall uh, in in regards to staff we're trying to keep everybody as healthy as possible um, which is uh, being incredible is incredibly challenging this time of year with um, gatherings and uh, things like that so uh, in a couple of cases we are utilizing uh, remote temporary remote work agreements to allow people to work from home while um, they're under the weather to help prevent the um, spread of um, bugs and stuff especially around the holidays days and also supporting um, supporting individuals who may have um, doctor's notes on why they shouldn't um, should not be uh, in the in the building because of um, different um, non illness but still health related concerns so working through that the best thing um, um, the best thing to, to probably consider if you do want to try and get a hold of someone is to try and um, send an email or a phone call first um, and not just assume that they're going to be in the office um, just because and for example like today um, also utilizing remote work to keep people safe by if they 
if it's if it's possible to, to quote unquote stay off the roads um, or travel um, travel at a safer time. So um, so working through and using all of the tools that are available to us to still be able to serve um, serve our clients and and our partner groups, um, but also keeping everybody as safe and healthy as possible. Um, some other staffing updates. Just wanted to let you know um, that. Um, regarding the regional crops, uh, crops and soils educator moving forward um, with that, um, looking at a January 17th implementation date. Um, so that will be Kevin Jarek. Kevin Jarek is a is an experienced uh, crop and soils educator within uh, University of Wisconsin Division of Extension, um, and he has um, he is taking on the road to uh, on the role to provide regional. Um, regional support um, to um, ag professionals and ag producers in the area of um, crops and soils. Currently, I'm working on a guidance document because this is a new position for both Outagamia or a new, a new type of a role. It's not a new position, but it's a new type of a role with the regional, uh, with the regional piece um to um, have a guidance document so that our support professionals um, can best handle um handle the inquiries and intake uh and also um that the the uh will also be shared with our full team so the educator teams in both of the counties um just to discuss you know share how how things are might be the same how they might be the diff how they might be different one of the big things is that's going to be um that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to provide um, we're going to need to triage um, intake. Um, you know, when if somebody were to call on the phone and say, "I need to talk to the county agent," which is a term that was sunset um, or is is been phased out over the course of the last ten to fifteen years, um, and it's not an immediate oh here and forward. It's finding out where the information or what the exact information they want is because there are. Um, at the at the state level, there's a a, a a very it's it's going to be it's in development, but a fairly robust set of resources to support um, things like farm management, um, which are a number of topics that are important to producers, um, but not necessarily are are expected to be in the expertise area of a crop and soils educator or a regional dairy educator. Um, so trying to get um, still providing extension resources and support and education educational information to those um, individuals as they come, but trying to do it in the way that best matches with where the information is at and to best utilize the our, our staff expertise. Um, the same process is going to be um, is going to be used, excuse me, <coughs> um, is going to be utilized when the dairy, the regional dairy educator comes on board. Um, that position the is is currently going through approvals, and um, we're looking at it being posted in um, January of um, 2023, uh, and then brought on board as um, as soon as practical after the um, after the recruitment and the hiring process um, goes through. Again, that's a that's a four county regional model uh, with Oconto, Shano, Outagami, and. Uh, Winnebago County. So um, looking forward to that moving forward. Uh, also, um, that will also be the case with the, the health and well-being educator. Um, the conversations um, have occurred in the um, using the feedback and the input that was um, collected during the, the budget review process um, to um, begin starting to uh, develop the um, the position description uh, approval process um, that will be finalized in in early in very early January right away after the Christmas break um, to get that posted so we can bring that individual on board um, probably in a similar time frame um, you know probably March at the at the latest April uh, to bring that on that position on board. Um, in both of the cases of the regional educator and the HWB educator, um, we do have the uh, the the in within the budget and the contracted services agreement. It is um, we do have it budgeted for a twelve month um, twelve months for for the twelve month contract, and the county will only be billed or invoiced for the actual um, time that an individual will be, will be in in the place uh will be in place and um you know working in the role so um there there in likelihood will be some um contracted um some savings or some under 
um, spent in the contracted services agreement. Any questions on, on statewide staffing or uh, local staffing? Go ahead, Tom. This is Tom. Hey, Tom. Hi. Uh, last, yesterday at the ARPA meeting, I think there was $3 million was set aside for the truck parties. It's what? Land and water. Land and water. And if it goes ahead, it sure sounds to me like this is something that the new guy would be working with, you know, how to do crops and, and planting 20 feet alongside a river so that the pollutants don't go in and all that. It, do they talk to each other? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, so the, the yeah, 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 they do. One of the things that there, there are two very different, um, you know, land, um, the land conservation department, um, th they, they manage the technical programs and the finances to um, help um, help producers make the changes um, and they work with um, the, so the collaboration pieces are working with the education um, so this is where the extension educators can help with um, educational support to help provide that background that research information on why the um, why the producer or landowner would want or need um, or should make any improvements or changes to you and utilize um, those program funds um, you know those program funds to be able to um, be able to implement implement so they are complementary and intentionally so okay thank you uh, question chris for you please and that is uh concerning the diversity affairs commission um is there support prior to the health and wellness person coming on board as far as uh setting up meetings location uh, minutes and that type of thing. Um, yeah, we 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 do have, um, but and and I'm not going to. Um, so so, Kay, the answer is yes. Um, with our our support professional team, we have capacity to be able to um, provide the the logistical support um, because of how our team is currently working. Um, it we would actually be best to if there was a request from one of the commission members for assistance to um, email to send an email to um, to all three plus carbon copy myself just so that we can all stay on the same page and then we can provide the assistance or support that we need in in conjunction with anything that um with with the county clerk's office just regarding any of the um meeting you know recordings and um making sure minutes and things like that are in place so so reaching out to you is the avenue to get this accomplished correct I would start with me, but I'm also going to then, um, uh, I will also include Ashley, Jody, and Amy as they're going to be the ones who will, um, who will be actually um, implementing or, or doing the actual uh, work with you. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions for Chris? All right. So hearing none, we'll go on then to the announcements for the extension events at the county board meetings. Do you want us to announce anything for 4-H or anything coming up that you'd like to extension? Um, here a um butter's coming out where pizza sale will be coming up in March. Um Announced that January yeah. orders are actually all. Yep. Uh, yeah. No, I not not no huge events that are. <clears throat> oh well, the um, county employees, the discover discover 4-H boxes. There's um, we're accepting registrations for those. Um, so individual county employees' children can actually sign up to get these discover 4-H boxes, which contain projects in them. Oh, Their youth, grandkids, whoever you know, can sign up. Um, and then there's also some Zooms tied to them as well if they want to attend some interactive Zoom. Can you just send an email on this and yep. I'll announce it? Yep. Yep. <coughs> However you want me to announce it, I'll announce it. Okay, I will do that. And then we go to the scholarship task force update. Anything new on that? Yeah, okay, it's not good news. Um, 
On October 31st, I had called court counsel twice and got her machine both times. I think the first time I left a message just that I was calling and I don't, but I don't have exact recall. The second time I may have just dialed again to see if I could catch her later in the afternoon and still didn't reach her. So November 2nd, I called and uh, actually used her cell phone. It was after hours, not that long. It was about 5.45 or something. And, and um, she said, I am so busy. I just cannot talk right now. I'll get back with you. I said, fine. The November meeting was early because the first Tuesday, the first Tuesday of the month was the first of the month. So we had an early meeting and we missed the November meeting. So I called her again, um, December 2nd, thinking I'm gonna jump on this thing and get a hold of her. And she said, I don't think you can bring this up again. I said, well, I'll find someone who voted against it. Because no, she says, if it gets voted down in October, it had to be a November meeting. And I said, but you didn't call me back in November. And I left two messages, one in person. She goes, oh, I don't even remember this, but I mean, it was on my, thank goodness for phones. I mean, I knew exactly when I had called the exact time of day. We may be out of luck for, for the foreseeable future. She's gonna check and see when it can be brought up again. But if you don't, if it, something gets voted down in month one, you gotta to go to month two. You can't wait till month three to bring it back up again. So she's checking to see what's gonna happen with this, but it, it may be dead in the water for right now uh, for the foreseeable future. I don't intend to let it go. Um, and you know, should I have pushed her harder? Uh, you know, you leave three, two messages and make three phone calls. Um, and again, if I had realized, if I, I mean, I knew that you had to get someone to, to, to bring it back up again with you who voted against it, which I thought I'd be able to do. Um, but if I had any remembrance or memory that you had to be the very next month, I would have pushed harder and I didn't. And so that's, we can, we can take the old way of doing it still there. Right. Oh yeah, we're still yeah. going to give. It's just it's not being enhanced. Like right. Anyway. Yeah, we still we are still we're still giving out the nine scholarships. There's still going to be a thousand dollars, you know. But when I I can't don't have it right in front of me, but I think it's either 163 or 168 percent increase in the last 22 years. Um, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's still there. We've done everything we can, and it just everybody's busy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just I wish I wish I'd been pushier. I guess I I don't think I'm pushed. So. Um, but, she's, but she says she's going to keep keep track of this and just see if there's any other any other interpretation of that um, that guideline or that bylaw or that rule or whatever it is that it has to be the very next meeting. So well, I think you can actually to... bring it back. You just can't bring back the same resolution. Like you'd have to ask instead of two thousand, you'd have to go for fifteen hundred or twenty five hundred. <gasps> that's all I have to do. I, I, I'm calling Mary Ann about that. That's my as long as it's not the same resolution that you've got turned down by the county board and it's a new resolution you can go on and submit it go you on. can't resubmit the same resolution that yeah. you had that was voted down and if actually you rewrite the resolution to a different matter yeah going to 1500 or 2500 i believe you could bring it again but i would try to make sure that you I got never the support that. to pass it because if we don't have support it'll just fail again yeah, yeah. you know i guess i can't understand what the people who vote against it, I guess I can't quite understand what is what is their reasoning for not wanting to support this gosh, it, it's a it's a fraction, a tiny, tiny, what did I say? It was 0. 0.00005 percent of the budget. And it's so tiny, and it's been laying there sort of like just floundering dead in the water for 20 years, 20 plus years. Why don't they see the need to? you know, push this anymore. I, I don't get it. So I will talk to Mary Ann and I will be pushy and make sure I get an answer for her. Sounds good. Next okay. thing on the committee. Karen, Karen, thank you very much for the update on that because I was wondering what the what the not the process, but what the next step was. Yeah, and I thought the next step was that I didn't have a next step for, for the foreseeable future, maybe even a couple of years. But um, changing, changing the resolution, um, and maybe I need to get the committee. You know, maybe you and you and I and Father Aaron need to get together and just have, even if it's a, even if it's a over the phone <coughs> conference call, and just say, 
Okay, are we set to go to? How do we proceed? $2,015, just to change the numbers somehow. Um, it just seems like it was not in the wrong, you were not in the wrong because you tried to get it on the November agenda. So it just seems strange that the rule would apply if you did everything you could. You have the phone record. I don't know. I don't know if I did everything. It could be could I kept on calling Marianne over and over again? I could have. Well, then, then you feel like you're harassing somebody. I know. You know like, I know. I wanna... You know, I probably would take it to the 1500 because that way you're making a significant. I mean, $500 is better than nothing. Mm -hmm. If they voted down to 2000, not going to get 2500. Okay. You know, so okay. I, I would, I would go the, the reducing it to the 1500. You might have a, a better chance. Okay. Maybe in, in future years, they can try again. But I, I doubt if we couldn't get them to go for 2000, that they'll go for 2500, and it would just be another. Another losing battle. Resolution. All right, we'll try fifteen hundred. Try to go to fifteen hundred. How's that sound to you, uh, Kay? Uh, I for fifteen hundred. It, it'll be good to see how this proceeds. Yeah. Okay. It'll be interesting. I know that there there's concern as far as is this the appropriate avenue for tax dollars to be spent. That's that's the question that I think is out there. Okay, I hadn't heard that. Okay, all right. All right, I'm looking forward to having a date set up, Karen. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Next, we got comments from the committee members. Anybody have any comments? Yes, sir. I have to speak. Hey guys, it's my turn, isn't it? <laughs> I haven't said much. I don't know if anybody has looked at their county board um, agenda yet but uh, there is a resolution coming up about changing the committee of jurisdiction for the diversity affairs commission from the UW extension to the county board. Um, this, is, this is a resolution that uh, is being brought forward. It may be at the, at the moment before the agenda or just after the agenda is adopted, it, it potentially could be taken off. But yeah, there is a, a resolution that is potentially out there and it is on the agenda. Um, go about looking at it, reading it. And like I said, it, it is to bring the committee of jurisdiction from the UW extension to the county board then being the committee of jurisdiction. Yeah, I don't personally know of any committee that reports to the county board. We all, we all report to another, like I'm on the UW Oshkosh Fox Cities Board of Trustees and if all our projects, like we sit down and we, we basically decide the direction we want to go it's a building project we have to basically report to the facilities and then we have to report to personnel and finance and then facilities takes it to the county board pretty much every committee has to go through other committees to get anything accomplished i don't know of a committee that just reports to the county board and that is how i'll explain it on the county board floor on tuesday it would be a unique situation because if you're a committee without any staff, you'll have nobody to support you. So you'll be like an island. You might as well have kept the commission like we were before we had the county board huh? take a, a commission out of it and appoint them. We had no support staff and that's what you'll have. If the extension is not part of your group, then you'll have no support staff. You'll, you'll be doing just like you're doing or you have been doing, you'll arrange the meetings, you'll get Sue to take the minutes. And that's really, you know, it's a temporary, She's not going to take the minutes for indefinite. You'll need to, the secretary will have to take the minutes eventually. I mean, if every one of our committees asked the clerk's office to take our minutes, she'd have to hire a new person. You know, it's really not part of her job. She has to do it because the meetings have to be basically documented. So in a short term, but that's the, the purpose of the extension office is to provide you the services that you need to function as a committee. Just like this committee today is functioning and it's through the help of the extension office. But if anything we do, we have to take to another committee. It's like when we got the bylaws and the strategic plan passed, we had to go to the extension office. The extension office took it to the county board three times it took to get the, that passed. And 
every committee I'm on, if, if the parks committee, when we basically do a project, we have to take it to facilities, we have to go to personnel and finance. There's a procedure in which the county works, and this is the procedure. So there would be a whole new system if a committee just took it to the county board. Because that's why you always hear when a, a county board member doesn't go through a committee, they always want to send it back to the committee. So I, I don't think what you're proposing really will work, but I'm happy to debate it with whoever is on the committee floor on Tuesday. And Steve, all I wanted to do is bring it forward and make y'all aware and, and go about looking at that agenda and that specific resolution so that you can be prepared on Tuesday. Yeah, I read that uh, the day it came out and I, I just, you know, yeah. it was surprising to me because for the, the first five months, all they want to do is disband, and then we, when we, hey, it was new to me too. Now they want to get rid of us. It's like it was absolutely new to me. Being successful and doing good for the community, the, the commission would definitely move forward. But that's only my opinion, and I'll be happy to debate well, it. Today. And Steve, it was news to me as well. I was under the same impression that you were that the commission wanted to disband this is news to me as well now when i say that i've known about it probably for the last two two weeks or so but um that's i i just wanted to bring it forward and make everybody aware to look at it yep. oh, we've got two kind of controversial things going on don't we yeah how hard we work in this committee to get you the, the support staff from the extension office. It wasn't an easy task, but we did accomplish it as a committee. We, we got the, the help that you need to move that committee forward. So I, I hope that yep. it, it fails on Tuesday and the commission finally moves forward mm -hmm. and, and starts going in the right direction. And you'll have one new member on there. I think she'll be a, a good asset to your, your committee and hopefully we can find you another one. Yeah, I saw that. Thank you. Any other comments? Hearing none. We'll go on to the scheduling the next meeting date, which would be January 19th of 2023. Third Thursday. Yes, sir. And with that, I take a motion to adjourn. So we have second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Have a good holiday. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>